I've Saved My Progress is independentpathoutlines.ai. Now, all that stuff that we saw back with that Venn diagram, that was live paint for babies. This is the good stuff here, where we create live intersecting objects using live paint. So what I'd like you to do is take the black arrow tool and go ahead and marquee these two paths so that they're both selected. Then drop down here to whatever tool's appearing at this location. In my case, it's back to the Shape Builder tool. I'll click and hold and select the Live Paint Bucket. And then with the Live Paint Bucket active, notice that I am seeing my swatches. It's very important, so make sure a swatch is active here in the Swatches panel. And if your green object is on top like this, then this is the approach I want you to take. That is, we're going to bring pieces of the orange object in front. So start with the green one in front if you're working along with me. And then I'll press the right arrow key to switch to orange and I'll click inside of this region to make that region orange like so. And then I'll move my way over to this intersection, click on it to fill it with orange and then move over to this intersection and click on it to make it orange as well. Now, assuming that your live paint bucket tool is set up to change fills and strokes, and if you want to confirm that, you can double click on the tool. Both paint fills and paint strokes should be turned on. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of this dialog box. Then what you want to do next is hover over one of these stroke intersections like so and make sure that you're seeing the rich black as the swatch above the cursor. If you're not seeing black for some reason or you don't see all those swatches, then what you want to do is go up to the stroke swatch here in the control panel and change the stroke to rich black. Anyway, it's already rich black for me, so I'm ready to go. And I can click on this stroke intersection right there in order to stroke it with black. You want to make sure that stroke weight is set to two point. All right, now I'll click and that goes ahead and creates a stroke at that location. I'll click here as well to create a stroke there. And we want strokes not there, actually that's all fine. I want a stroke here and here on this bit of orange path and I want one here and here as well. And then I'm gonna get rid of these little strokelets right here and here, for example, that are getting in the way of my fluid orange circle. And I'll do that using the Live Selection tool, just for the sake of variety. So I'll switch from the Live Paint bucket to the Live Paint Selection tool, which you can get, of course, by pressing Shift-L if you like. And then I'll click on these path outlines right here, that is, these little sub-paths. So click on one, Shift-click on the other, click and Shift-click on these guys, and click and Shift-click on these guys as well. And you might be tempted at this point. I'll go and twirl the live paint group open so we can see what's going on. Notice we've got a lot of path outlines now. We've got two paths defining the circle. We've got this exterior path that's defining the outline of the green shape. And then we have all these other paths that are cut out of it. But watch what happens if I just select these paths and press the backspace key, everything gets really messed up. We have all these breaks all over the place in our paths. And that's not what we want. It looks good. But if we try to modify the results at this point, then everything goes to heck. Let me show you. I'll grab my wide arrow tool and then I'll alt drag or option drag across the top portion of this green shape right there. And I'll drag it to a different location and you can see that everything just busts apart. So you never want to delete little strokelets when you're working inside of a live paint object. Anyway, I'll press Control Z, Command Z on the Mac. And the reason I'm harping on this is because I've made that mistake a lot in the past. And I don't want you to make that mistake. I'll go ahead and grab once again my Live Paint Selection tool. And I'll also press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac in order to get those little strokes back. I'll grab my Live Paint Selection tool. And then I'll click on those same strokes that I clicked on before. So click and shift click on each of these, of course, in order to select them. And then what you want to do is you want to change those strokes from black to none here inside the swatches panel or wherever else. You could just press the slash key as well if you want to. And that'll give you this effect here. And now we still have some cohesiveness where our path outlines are concerned. If I switch back to my wide arrow tool and I alt drag or option drag around that same region that I selected before and I drag this path outline to a different location, I left behind some of these holes down here at the bottom. So that's something of a mistake, but I still have exactly the same interaction of objects that I had before. So everything's working out the way I wanted to. If I want to move the entire green object there, I would shift alt drag or shift option drag across these regions that didn't get selected the first time around. And then I would drag them around like so, and everything survives quite nicely. All right, anyway, I'm gonna press Control Z, Command Z on the Mac in order to undo that change. We've done a beautiful job so far of making sure that this orange object intersects with the green object. So the circles both in front of and behind the Celtic knot object there. However, what do we do 
about weaving the Celtic knot into itself. That's a puzzle because if you look at the Celtic knot.ai file, notice that it does go in front of itself at one point and then behind itself, and then it wraps around in front of the circle and then in back of the circle, in front of itself, and back of itself, in front of the circle, in back of the circle, and so on. Well, I can't do that with what I've got here. It looks great so far, but I don't have these regions. I can't tell Live Paint to do anything to this area because there's nothing there. I have nothing to start with. That's the mistake I was telling you about in the previous exercise. That's why I've called this Live Paint number one. And that's why we're going to go ahead and turn that layer off, turn primitives back on, grab primitives, make a duplicate by dragging it onto the page icon, dropping it there, and then turn off your original primitives layer once again so that you don't mess it up. Double click on primitives copy. Let's call this guy live paint number two this time around. Change its color to something like gold. It's one of my favorites, click okay. And this time around, we're gonna take a much better approach that's gonna give us those areas of intersection. It's not obvious that that's what we needed to do before, but it's obvious now, and I'll show you exactly how that works in the next exercise.